Hey guys, so you'll be happy to know that I've washed my bed sheets since making the slime video, but I have been finding glitter everywhere. Everywhere. Anyway, today we're going from slime to psychology. <laughs> That's how it rolls on this channel. You just don't know what you're gonna get. So I'm gonna dive straight into my pink squishy little brain and find out some things that I didn't even know about myself. And I'm also gonna do it for you as well. So if you wanna play along, get a pen and paper, or get a notepad open, or if you're watching this in the future, psychically write it all down on your Apple iBrain, as we're gonna be doing a psychology test called A Walk Through the Woods, which also involves virtually going outside. So if anyone asks if you've been outside today, you technically have with me in our minds. So I'd like you to close your eyes and picture yourself walking through some woods and I'm gonna ask you some questions and the first thing that comes into your head is the answer. So don't think about it loads and try and think of the funniest thing. Just go with the first instinct. That's your answer and that's gonna get the best result. You might wanna pause after I ask each question because I'm gonna say my answer straight away and I don't wanna cloud your judgment. So get your finger on that pause button. Ready? Let's do it. You are walking in the woods. Is that my narration voice? Are we going with this? You're walking in the woods. Who are you walking with? See, my mind just went to Captain America and I don't know why, but that's gonna, <laughs> I guess that's my answer now. I'm walking with Captain America. Question two, you are, I, I've stopped the voice now, sorry. You're walking through, I know I'm walking through the woods, I just said that. You see an animal, what kind of animal is it? See, my mind just went to mammoth, uh, <laughs> which are neither found in the woods nor live at all. <laughs> I was trying to think of the word for extinct, but it could be reality because in the future what they could do is like create a mammoth sperm from a frozen mammoth leg and then, leg, and <laughs> might not find it in the leg, and then uh, put it inside an elephant egg and then birth it out of an artificial womb creating a mammoth, which has some moral implications, but I would be very excited to visit the mammoth and eventually visit Jurassic Park, which would lead to my death but I'd still go. Anyway, whatever, write down your animal. Three, what interaction takes place between you and the animal? I, I think I'd look at it and then I'd stroke it. Mammoths are friendly, right? Siri, were mammoths vegetarians? I didn't find any matching restaurants. Rest, what? I was asking you about restaurants. You are just betraying me today, Siri. Okay, I'll Google it the old fashioned way, how the cavemen did it. The woolly mammoth was vegetarian and used their tusks to excavate the snow and uproot tundra grass with its trunk. There we go, I would give it a little stroke. I'd feed it a bit of tundra grass while I was at it. You walk deeper into the woods and you see a clearing before you. There is your dream house. Describe its size. See, I don't think I'd have a mansion. You see some celebrities living in mansions and it's like, how are you gonna get to your bedroom if it's 14 miles away? Why would you want all that space? I think I'd want a swanky penthouse with enough room for a dog to run around looking at some kind of city skyline. Am I in New York? My man went to New York then. I think I'm in the woods. I'm on the edge of Central Park and that's my skyline. Okay, so tall but not too big. Is your dream house surrounded by a fence? I don't think it was in my mind. I think I could just go in. You enter the house, you walk to the dining area and see the dining table. Describe what you see on and around the table. I'm walking in, I'm seeing the dining table. It's set up, ready for food. There's some flowers in the middle on the table, looking nice and a goldfish bowl. Probably getting a bit of inspiration from The Sims now. You, uh, you exit the house through the back door. If I'm in a penthouse, is that to my death? Uh, <laughs> the end of the story is I died. Lying on the grass is a cup. What material is the cup made out of? Ooh, my mind just went to metal, that's weird. Why am I picturing a metal cup? I'm sure it'll mean something. I'm a psychopath. What do you do with the cup? If I just found a cup on the ground, I'd probably put it in the bin because you wouldn't want to take it home and drink from it, would you? Whose mouth's been around that? You don't want to get herpes. You walk to the edge of the property where you find yourself standing at the edge of a body of water. What type of body of water is it? A body of water? Well, I guess I'm in Central Park. I think it's like a puddle is what, <laughs> is what I pictured, <laughs> like a dirty puddle. How would you cross the water? I'd jump over it because I don't like getting my trainers wet in puddle water because then they squeak. Find out your results below. Oh, we're done. Da, 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 da. So make sure all the answers are written down because we're about to analyze what it means. The answers given to the questions have been shown to have a relevance to values and ideals that we hold in our personal lives. Please don't judge me too hard on these answers. But yeah, answer yours along with me. The person who you're walking with is the most important person in your life. <laughs> so, Captain America is the most important person in my life. I mean, he's up there. Have you seen the Twitter post he does with his dogs? 
It's ridiculous. It makes my heart melt. But yeah, Captain America, I'll take it. The size of the animal is representative of your perception of the size of your problems. Oh, I had a mammoth. So I think my problem, <laughs> I guess the word mammoth is used to describe the biggest of problems. Guys, I've got a mammoth problem over here. I guess I do freak out. If I've got something on my mind, I do make it into a bigger issue than it is. So I think that makes sense. I'm always like, oh, what's gonna happen? What's gonna go wrong? Everything's gonna go wrong. When it's always fine, I always make things into mammoths when they're probably just stoats. The severity of your interaction you have with the animal. Is it just gonna murder the animal? Jesus is representative of how you deal with the problems, passive or aggressive. I stroked the mammoth and gave it some tundra grass, so <laughs> I guess I'm quite passive with my problems. I like to feed them grass and stroke them. <laughs> so maybe I should have killed the mammoth. Maybe that would be a better thing. I'm getting better though. I'd say some advice with facing a problem is just deal with it straight away. Like if you've got to make an awkward phone call, just do it that morning because then you won't just be like bubbling up about it the entire day and then it's gone. You can have a free day. You can play some Final Fantasy 15. The size of your house is representative to the size of your ambitions. Well, I guess if I'm in the top of a skyscraper, my ambitions are pretty high, so that might be a good thing. Imagine if someone said a tiny Lego house. I'll build you an extension with more Lego. Have a little bit more ambition. I believe in you. Oh, it's the fence. No offense. Uh, <laughs> uh, is indic- Shush. No fence. Oh, I had no fence. Is indicative of an open personality. The presence of a fence indicates a closed personality. You'd prefer people not to drop by unannounced. If someone's coming to my house and they haven't warned me, I'd be like, what are you doing? I'm in my pants. You could have warned me. So, I don't agree. Maybe my house did have a fence, I just didn't see it. Ooh, the table setting. Wow, this is a depressing one. If your answer did not include food, people, or flowers, then you are generally unhappy. I got the flowers! I, I don't think I had food. It was ready for food to go on it, and there was no people there. <laughs> but I'm gonna hold on to those flowers. That is interesting though, because the house on my mind was empty. Stop judging me, quiz. The durability of the material which the cup is made of, oh, this is complicated, is representative of the perceived durability of your relationship with the person named in number one. So, so me and Captain America have a steely relationship. It's so strong. Chris Evans for life. Your disposition of the cup is representative of your attitude towards the person in number one. So, <laughs> so I just put Captain America in the bin. I'm sorry. I guess I'm a fickle person. I didn't like Civil War as much as everyone else. There I said it. The size of the body of water is representative of the size of your desire for love. Mine was a dirty puddle, so <laughs> read into that what you will. How wet you get in crossing the porter is indicative of the relative importance of your love life. Well, I just hopped right over it. I bet loads of you had like expansive lakes that you swam through. <laughs> and I just had a dirty puddle. Wow. And that's the end of the quiz. That was fun. I feel like I learned something about myself. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you've got any funny answers, please leave them in the comments below because I would love to read them. And give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I might do another psychology test in the future. But I'm gonna head off into the wilderness now, back into the woods. Uh, if you wanna subscribe, you can subscribe to my channel or the gaming channel by clicking one of those buttons. My last video is over there and I will see you in the dream world as I gallop past you on a mammoth stroking Captain America's hair. Goodbye.